Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we are going to see the question largest rectangle in a histogram. Given n non-negative integers representing the histogram's bar height, where the width of each bar is 1, find the area of largest rectangle in the histogram. For this particular example, the largest area here is 10 which is shown by the marking over here. Now let's see how we can solve this question. So I have plotted the same example in this particular diagram which says that the first value has height 2, the second has height 1 and so on. Here the maximum area that can be covered is this 10 blocks which is 10. Now the basic idea behind solving this question is at each index we need to find a left and a right boundary wherein the height of rectangle is at least equal to the current height that is there. So if I take the index as 2, I want to find out a left boundary and a right boundary between which the height is at least the height of this particular index's height that is 5. So the left boundary and the right boundary will come over here and here. So let's take an example of index 4. So index 4 has a height of 2. If we go to left to see where we are getting a height which is less than this height, it is index 1. So that becomes our left boundary. And if we go to right and see where we are getting an index that has a height which is less than 2, so it becomes 6 as 6 is the end of the array. Now that we have the left and right boundary, the area could be found out by height into width which requires width which is right minus left minus 1 so which will be 6 minus 1 minus 1 which gives us this 4 and the height as 2 which gives us the area as 8. So the main idea over here would be how to find the left boundary and the right boundary for every index. The brute force or the basic solution would be by using an array. So for left boundary array, we would be starting with index 1 and go towards left. Initially, we will put the index of 0 in the left as minus 1 because we will find a lesser height only beyond the array and we will take that as minus 1. And for the right, similarly, at n minus 1, that is at the last index, the right would be 6, that is n, because then we will be get going outside the array. And that's exactly where the height is lower than the current height of this nth index. So once we have fixed the index 0 and index n minus 1, we will start from 1 and n minus 2 for left and right. And for each index, we either go to left to find the left boundary or go to right to find the right boundary and store the index wherever we get height of that index is less than the height of current. So for example, if we see at index 1 the left would go to minus 1 as we have one height for 0 also so the left would be minus 1 for this and if we see right for this one that would also be 6 because all the way around till 5 we have a height of 1 if we take an example of index 2 which is this one the right for this would be 4 as this is the index where the height becomes less than 5 and its left would similarly be 1 wherein the height becomes less than 5. So once we have these arrays filled, we would need width and area and we can update the max area depending on the area we get at particular index every time. Now that we know about the array approach, let's go ahead and code this one. After this, we will be seeing the next approach which is by using stack. Let's first take some variables. We will take n that will store the length of the array, the max area which would be 0 in the start. The left and right array wherein we will be storing the left and right boundaries. In here, left of 0 becomes minus 1 and right of n minus 1 becomes n. Now we'll loop to fill these array. So we start with the first index and I'll take an integer variable previous which would be i minus 1. This is for comparing the heights. While previous is greater than equal to 0 and height of previous is greater than or equal to height of current index, we do 
previous equal to left of previous. We do this so that we minimize the jumps that we are making to the left. At the end we do left of i equal to previous. Similarly, we will be doing for right. So here we will be starting from end and similarly your previous will become i plus 1 and while previous is less than n and we do previous equal to right of previous and finally right of i equal to previous. Once we have these two arrays filled, we need width and the area. So we again loop on i equal to 0 to n and we find width equal to right minus left minus 1 and area equal to maximum of max area and the current area which is given by height into width. After everything is done, return max area. Let's even write the base condition that if n is 0, we need to return 0. Let's run this code and we have got a right result. Let's submit this and that got submitted. The time complexity over here on average is O of n because we are saving the jumps by using left of previous and not by going to each and every place. But it can also go higher from that. The space complexity over here is O of n because we are using these two arrays to store left and right values. Now let's go and see the next approach which uses stack. The stack approach is somewhat similar to the one that we saw in question trapping rainwater. So what we do is we take a stack and we'll keep on adding the indexes in the stack till we get an increasing sequence. Once the sequence becomes decreasing, we need to pop the elements and find the area. So that's the basic idea behind the stack. So let's take this stack and now once you'll be at index 1, the height of the current becomes less than that of the top of the stack which is the 0th index. So this height becomes decreasing. So what we do here is we find the area for the elements that are present in the stack. Now to find the area we pop the element from the stack and then for that element the area becomes the height of top multiplied by current that is the i current that is 1 if the stack becomes empty that is if it is the only element present otherwise we find the width and then multiply it with the height of this top element. The width would be right minus left minus 1. So right would be this 1, left would be peaking the stack. Now for this case we pop 0 and the stack becomes empty. So the area becomes height of this 0 multiplied by current which is 1. This is right or current which is 1. So the area becomes 2. Now if we were at index 4, we would have had these elements in the stack. So in that case, the right of the current would be 4. And now let's start popping the elements out. So while popping 3, the area for this becomes 6 and the max area becomes 6 over here. Now when we pop this 2, the area here becomes the area for 5 and this 5 from the previous ones. So that gives us the area of 10 and this gets updated in max area. When we pop this 1, the area for the height of 1s would become 4 till here. Which is not actually greater than the max area. So the max area remains unchanged. Now the stack has become empty. Going forward we will push this and the next ones and then see how the max area changes till the end. So I am not going to show you each and every iteration. This is all the gist about what is there in the stack approach. Now that we know the theory behind this, let's go and code this approach. So here we will take three variables, n, max area and a stack. Now 
after this we'll have a for loop in this for loop we'll take a variable current height that would be if i is n it becomes 0 otherwise it becomes height of i after this what we do is we check if current height becomes greater than the height of top element of the stack then we do a push because it is increasing sequence otherwise we do pop and find area so for this we'll write a while loop we check stack is not empty and current height is less than height of stack dot peak in this case we take a variable top which would hold the popped element so this is our current element on which we are working now we need width and area so width differs if stack is empty or stack is not empty after we pop the element so we take int width equal to if stack is empty width becomes i otherwise it becomes right minus left minus 1 which would be i minus stack dot peak minus 1 let us s so once we have width we'll find area which will be the current height multiplied by width and max area would become maximum of both the areas if this while loop is not entered it means that it is an increasing sequence and we need to push the index after everything is done return max area let's run this code and it gives a perfect result let's submit this and there it got submitted the time complexity for this algorithm over here is o of n and the space complexity also is o of n thanks for watching the video i'll see you in the next one